What's cracker like in home dogs? It's your boy Channel Pup, and we got a more serious one today. We're gonna be discussing something that's lurking about on this platform that nobody ever warns you about or talks about. And it is incredibly important that people are aware of this, so I suggest you share this video around. Especially if you've got any friends that are YouTube content creators or want to be YouTube content creators. So no more beating around the bush, let's just get on with this. So you may have noticed, I think five or six days ago, I disappeared off of the face of this platform. And I know that some of you noticed that my videos started disappearing, that my name was suddenly changed to Foundation RPX. At least 80 people noticed because I dropped 80 subscribers at that time. So I'm going to explain to you what happened. Obviously, this channel was hijacked by hackers. And the way that this happened was something that I am partly responsible for. It is something that I myself enabled. So here's one thing that people don't tell you about. YouTubers do not make a lot of money through YouTube and its ad revenue alone, and we often need to find other methods of making income, be it Patreon, or channel memberships, or merch, or sponsorships. People tend to assume that YouTubers are just being money hungry when they take sponsorships, but the reality is most YouTubers are money hungry because they will be food hungry if they are not. I hope that makes sense. For the more slower of you, it just means we're broke. Hey, no shame, man. Everyone digests information at their own pace. So oftentimes a YouTuber has to go out and search for companies to sponsor them, or sometimes we're approached by individuals that want to help out. And sponsorships can be very hit and miss. In the times where they're purely commission-based, you can be doing a lot of advertising for no payment. In a recent case I had with Winx DVD, it went really, really well. They are a great company that really looked after me, but ultimately I do do a little research on every company that approaches me to do a sponsorship just to make sure it's not a scam or that they're not one of those companies that never delivers the products. And I've had a few companies like that approach me and I just never respond. Like, you want me to do a sponsorship for you, deliver your product to your clients. So, I was approached by Wondershare Filmora. Now, I know of Wondershare Filmora. You see adverts for it on YouTube and Facebook sometimes. It is a bona fide product that a small number of people use as an alternative to Adobe Premiere Pro. So naturally, I felt inclined to kind of trust when Wondershare came and contacted me to do a sponsorship for them. Now here's the thing, a lot of people will tell you look out for broken English when it comes to companies contacting you because that's usually a telltale sign, but to be honest, it's not. Like, I've had a number of perfectly fine kosher sponsorships contacting me in broken English. I think anybody that's ever bought a cosplay knows that some people deal with broken English and it's perfectly normal. Not everybody speaks English as their first language and it can be very tricky for them. Sometimes other people have to rely on translation which isn't always entirely accurate so I'm fully understanding of that. So Filmora send me a link to their website where I can download a demo for their software. They give me a license key and it all looks about right. Right, the website looks exact one-to-one -to, -one to what the Filmora website looks like. And there's nothing on Opera or Chrome that's flagging up this website as potentially malicious, it's perfectly fine. But the URL is slightly different, it's a little bit more simple than the other one, so I did text to ask about that, and they said this was just their affiliate portal. Which again, is pretty standard fare for sponsorships. When I dealt with NordVPN, they had a different affiliate website to their main one. Now I was enticed by the prospect of this business deal, by the potential large sum of cash I could be receiving for demoing their editing software. So I downloaded the installer onto my computer, opened it up, and nothing happened. But my antivirus did flag up that it was trying to access certain files that would be completely irrelevant to a film editing software. Why would the Wondershare installer want to see my girlfriend's Christmas list? So I blocked it, deleted the installer, and had my antivirus clean sweep my PC. But it flew under the radar, and approximately 30 minutes later, I cannot get back into my YouTube account. The password has been changed, and the videos are all going down. The name of my channel changed to Foundation RPX. Three years of hard work all gone. 
and it's a moment that's kind of stuck with me. Because to others, it is a YouTube channel. I'm just a guy on social media that makes videos and makes a little money out of it. But for me, this was not only my entire livelihood going down the drain, and something that I had worked three years to achieve, it was a channel that I had put a lot of my heart and soul into. And I was just kind of sat there watching it change into a Ripple impersonator. Now, this has been an ongoing problem in 2020 of channels getting hijacked to host fake Ripple channels. So there's basically a scam going around masquerading as the Ripple XRP cryptocurrency. These scammers want to look as legitimate as possible, so they'll try and take channels with a certain following and with a certain watch time data. Like, you know how when you receive a friend request from somebody and they've got no friends whatsoever on that account and no profile pictures, no prior posts? You usually just delete that request because you assume something fishy's going on there. What these guys are doing is taking accounts that already have a following and data. In some cases, they've taken channels with around 500,000 subscribers and a verified checkmark and renaming it to Brad Garlinghouse, the owner of the Ripple XRP cryptocurrency. And it all looks pretty legitimate. What do they do? They run kind of the Nigerian prince kind of scam, where they're like, if you give us $10,000, we'll give you back 20,000 XRP. I don't know the exact... Um, scam that it is, but it works like that. And there have been instances where these scammers have been running these channels for long periods of time. I can only assume that Team YouTube have very much stepped up their game because they only got eight minutes of their time on my channel before YouTube terminated it. I really hope it was worth it, you sad bastards. All that for eight minutes of their time. Now, I do worry about who they may have scammed using my channel because their live stream had 25,000 viewers. But given the attempts at looking legitimate, I'm guessing that a lot of those were bot accounts. Now, I did get lucky in the end. This channel was three years of work. The hackers went to the work of using it for just eight minutes, and it took Team YouTube four days to recover the channel for me. There are some victims of this scam that have had their channel hijacked for like a week or so, allowing these people to scam numerous people losing thousands of subscribers in the process. And for some, this isn't just gonna be three years of work. This is gonna be their life's work. This could be something they've put all of their heart and soul into for their entire life, gone. YouTube has terms of service, but nobody gives you a rule book on what to look out for when you're planning on expanding your income. And people really do need to be aware that there's a lot of fraudulent sponsorships that are out to get you. You're just trying to make an honest living but there are people out there that want to ruin that for you. Now, the virus that you get with this can vary, but I must have gotten a pretty aggressive version of it because one day later, my laptop shut off, zero power going to it whatsoever. I could not get it back on. Couldn't do it if I tried, and I tried numerous different methods, in fact. In the end, I opted to buy a refurbished laptop, with fortunately all of the essentials I need to run this channel all on an external drive. So what I would suggest to anyone being approached by a sponsorship that looks really enticing, do Google the company. Check if the URL of that company's official website matches the URL you've been given. Don't download anything otherwise. Really do pay for antivirus, and try to keep your work and your essentials on an external drive. Because I cannot stress enough how serious it can be to lose your entire livelihood, your job, the thing that's keeping a roof over your head, or only barely doing that. And what a pain in the ass it was for me to fork out for a new laptop that I can't truly afford right now but I kind of just had to grit my teeth and get on with it. But there are a lot of people I really do want to thank for helping me out during this period, helping to get Team YouTube's attention. People have been incredibly kind. I would like to thank everybody that spread the word over Twitter and showed all the support that they did. I would like to thank Rex and Team YouTube for looking after me and helping to retrieve the channel. I would like to thank the Game Apologist for introducing me to Sirius the Skeptic, who I also really want to thank. Because Sirius was able to speak up the process of retrieving the YouTube channel probably by like a thousand fold. Like this could have gone on a lot longer if he didn't really help to guide me through the process, so I'm going to be handing over to him now. Hey there, my name is Cirrus. I run a channel called Cirrus the Skeptic, and my channel is my main source of income. This is what I do as a job. This is what I do to feed myself and my family. So 
when a channel gets stolen, it is kind of a very personal thing to me, because it's not just the idea that uh, this could happen to me, it's the idea that this has happened to me, and I don't want this to happen to anybody's channel. Um, this is the interaction that I had with what I thought to be a real company, uh, where they wanted to send me a program called EasyLib, uh, like a library of sorts, uh, digital one, for me to actually review and then potentially put on my channel. Now, I do a lot of debunking and uh, reviewing of bad philosophical arguments on my channel, so the idea of being able to say, hey, here's this library of books, some of which might actually be useful, was very enticing to me. It felt real because this is something that is actually in line with what my channel would do. It wouldn't be the first time I've done book recommendations, it's just the this time I might actually get paid for it. Uh, I sent a message that said that uh, I opened the file and then it disappeared. Uh, this is because the file was sent to me in a .rar format and then when I clicked on the file itself, the uh, executable, uh, it actually disappeared completely. Now this is a thing that happens a lot of times with viruses. I would go on to learn that the type of virus this is is called an RAT, or a Remote Admin Tracking Virus. Uh, if you're noticing, that also spells out RAT, which I think is very fitting. What the RAT does is it stays inside your computer, hidden, and it does various things. One is that if you log into an email, uh, it will automatically grab any information from that email in a scan. Uh, if you happen to log into any website, it will go ahead and do a key log of whatever you've done uh, and anything that you have open. So for instance, if you've got Chrome open and you are logged into something on Chrome, it will go ahead and infect your Chrome software and grab your Gmail from there. And that's how it got me because I didn't log into that. It didn't have to key log to log me in though. All it had to do was grab my information from Chrome. Now these types of software can also be included with something to brick your computer uh, to prevent you from being able to fight back. Uh, I actually have a machine that has been bricked by this software already um, because I have the computer I edit on and then I had a backup computer. I opened one of these emails on that backup computer after having gone through all of this and the computer got bricked. I have to reinstall the operating system on it. So this stuff is no joke. It's dangerous. It cannot just take out your channel. It can also take out your hardware. But I've got a bunch of screenshots uh, from the various areas that YouTube asked me for, uh, for evidence that this was in fact my channel. If Pup wants to include those, uh, that's up to Pup. But I've got stuff like when the recovery email was changed, meaning I couldn't get into my email address anymore to get my account back. Uh, evidence of when they changed the password itself. Uh, I have screenshots from when they changed my recovery questions, meaning that even the bare minimum stuff, like the base security measures I could use to get into my channel were taken away. Um, I've got screenshots from my Patreon, where the videos that had been put up on my Patreon were deleted, because as my channel had been stolen, uh, they changed the name to Ciceribi Gaming, uh, as opposed to Cirrus, and then started deleting videos from it. Now, Pup, I know this is basically what happened to you when your channel got stolen and turned into Bitcoin Apologia. So this is a thing that happens to a lot of YouTubers. And I've also included 16 emails. Uh, these are a small sampling uh, from the last few months of various emails that I have gotten from, quote, companies that have tried to get advertising on my channel. Now, if you flash some of them up on the screen, let's go ahead and assume that maybe one or two of them are real because I have gotten at least one real sponsorship in the three years my channel has existed. When you look at these emails, one of them might be real, but I have no way of knowing one of them's real over the 15 other ones that are fake. And again, this is only a small sampling. There's at least 100 in my email, but I can't be farked to go digging through all of them. And this is where I want to get into kind of my conclusion, kind of my point. Uh, the issue with this is that this is an incredibly predatory system. Not only does this potentially mean that any channel that you love can get taken down for merely wanting to get an enough money to provide food for their families, but whereas larger channels can potentially survive off of advertiser revenue and maybe even Patreon dollars in order to make ends meet, smaller channels don't necessarily have that same ability. I know at my size, I only make a few hundred dollars off of advertising revenue. Everything else has to be taken care of by Patreon. So when you look at a system like this, if you are a small content creator, you are in a unique position. Not only are you the type of person who would desperately need one of these sponsorships in order to get enough money to make YouTube an actual career prospect, but the other issue is that because your channel is so small, the likelihood of being able to get something done through the use of community help is really, really low. Luckily, when this happened to me, I kept all of the emails and everything saved, so I had the contact numbers, the email to go to, and everything that they were going to 
need when you get in the email to send to pup. But when you're navigating this stuff blind, you can sometimes end up stumbling for a month and a half like I did, desperately trying to get this to work, desperately trying to get your channel back, trying to prove that you are in fact yourself. But there's a third problem that comes with all this. It's not just that companies that are doing this are incredibly predatory because smaller channels are in the unique position to be adversely affected by this more so than larger ones, and in the position to need these sponsorships more than other ones. The final issue is that if you are a channel and you end up taking a hiatus for any reason, no matter what it is, the YouTube algorithm doesn't promote you the same way when you come back. I got my channel back months ago, and I'm still struggling to make up the same numbers that I used to have back before my channel was taken. This is because YouTube's algorithm generally favors it when you are able to put out consistent content at the same time on the same days. However, if you experience a disruption in that schedule of more than a couple days, the YouTube algorithm generally stops favoring you. Putting out consistent, regular content is what lets you grow a channel right now. You can't just rely on a handful of viral videos. So not only is it predatory to do this, and not only are smaller channels put in the unique position of being mostly adversely affected by this, you can sometimes get a channel that will simply never recover from the backlash of this. There's a myriad of reasons why these shady companies might be stealing channels. Some of them steal them so that they can sell them to other companies that use them to make masked style clickbaity fluff videos. It also might be stolen for Bitcoin apology or like what happened to Pup. But whatever reason a company is attempting to steal your channel, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, it's incredibly predatory, smaller channels are in a unique position to be adversely affected by it, and it's not just a matter of getting your channel back, there's an uphill battle after the fact. Smaller channels on the platform already have an uphill battle to begin with. When stuff like this happens, it's like climbing a cliff and having someone kick you down back to the bottom. Yeah, you might know how to get back to the spot you were when you were kicked off the cliff, but it can take a toll on your mental health to potentially know that you might have to go through all that again. That said, I think I've maybe eaten up a little too much airtime here, but I wanted to get my thoughts and feelings out on what happened to my channel and how I think this affects pretty much all small YouTube channels. So thank you very much, Pup, for letting me hop on the show. I'm hoping that there isn't as much of an uphill battle going forward for you. You're almost halfway to 100,000 subs, and I really would like to see you get there. So I understand this has been a bit of a long one and a bit of a serious one. I understand this isn't the topic that people tend to watch my videos for, but I really do ask that you help me get this seen because it is very important that people talk about this. It is important that this discussion is on the table. I would also like to thank XD Gamer and Channel Kyle for trying to get the word around on YouTube that my channel was hacked. And of course I would like to thank Kinundo for starting a GoFundMe campaign to help me afford this laptop. I guess I'll put a link in the description for that. I am at a stage where finances are going to be an incredibly difficult thing because this was a completely unexpected expenditure. So do comment below, discuss, share it around, get it known. While this video may not end hacking forever, I sure as hell hope I can make it a bit more difficult for them. And your knowledge and your awareness will be the greatest weapon I can wield to bonk them over the head with. Because boy would I ever enjoy doing that. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe, hit the like button. In the description below are different social media feeds where you can come and chat with me. And they are important for if I do ever lose access to this YouTube account again, I can contact you there to let you know. Also note the link to the Patreon and the Join button. If you're feeling extra supportive and extra generous, I could really use the help more than ever right now. But of course, big ask, you don't have to do that. The fact you're here means enough to me. So thank you so much for watching, fellow home dogs, and have a great day. But most importantly, stay safe.